Hello students, I am Maniket. Welcome back to IGCS and Fingertips. In today's video, we are going to discuss calculus or you may say differentiation. This topic was introduced couple of years back and even today its concepts are not clear. So let us before getting into topic, let us first try to understand the need of differentiation or why differentiation. So for that, I have taken a small example. As you can see, this is a speed time graph. Now this speed time graph is of a car journey, right? And in any graph, there are two things which are important. The first is slope of the graph and second is area under the graph, right? Now the slope of speed time graph gives you acceleration. Now if I want to find out acceleration, I can find out the slope of this graph and hence I'll get the acceleration. If I want to find out the distance of this graph, then I can find area under the curve and I can get the distance. Now as you can see, this graph is consisting of straight lines. So finding out slope is pretty easy and finding out area is also pretty easy because as you can see, this is a the shape A is triangle, shape B is rectangle, shape C forms a trapezium and shape D forms a triangle. And we know formula of all these shapes. So it is pretty easy to find out slope and area under this kind of graph. Now let us take one more example. Now let me draw a speed time graph of another journey. Now see, what was the problem with the previous graph? The previous graph showed uniform motion, right? That is, it was covering equal distance in equal interval of time. But in practical life, this is not possible. You leave from your home, your car speed increases, but then you stop at a signal, your car speed decreases, right? Or even in traffic, the speed continuously increases and decreases. So it can never form a straight line curve or a straight line graph. So in reality, let's say I'm leaving from my home, my speed gradually increases. Then I am stopping at a signal, so my speed is 0 and then I have to apply brake and my speed is now 0, right? This is a speed time graph. Now, in this graph, I want to find out acceleration or I want to find out its distance. How will I do that? Because this is not a straight line. So, how to find acceleration then? Is it not possible to find acceleration? No, it is actually possible. Right? But there are two different ways to find out acceleration in such kind of graph. What are those two ways? The first way is by drawing tangent and the second way is by the use of calculus. Right? Now, let's say I want to try with the first way. That is by drawing out tangent. So what could I do? I am assuming that this I am leaving my house at 10 a.m. and this is my 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. whatever it be. Now let's say I want to find out my acceleration at 12 p.m. So what would I generally do is I would draw a tangent when my time is 12 p.m. I would draw a tangent when my time is let me just redraw it. Let's say this is 12 p.m. This is its x value and this is my y value. Now in order to find out acceleration, I will draw a tangent at this point. Tangent, what is a tangent? Tangent is a line which intersects a curve at a single point. So assuming this is my tangent, I will find now I'll find slope of this tangent. Now, as you can see, tangent is nothing but a straight line, right? So you can easily find out gradient of a uh, straight line by using the formula y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. But there are a couple of problems associated with this method. Problem number one, I have drawn this curve using my hand, right? So this is a free hand curve. So my curve would not be that accurate as I, as you can see, I'm not good at drawing. So my curve is definitely not going to be accurate. Second thing, second problem associated with this is, let's say this journey is of 36 hours or the journey is of 72 hours or the journey is of three days. 
then I'll have to draw the graph for three days and then I'll have to find out the gradient or I'll have to find out the tangent. So the answer or the gradient of this graph is not accurate. The answers may vary from person to person until you have a computer or a laptop in which you have drawn the graph, but you don't have to carry, you, you are not supposed to carry it in your exam. So technically this is not the correct way. Now what is the second way? Second way, we are going to study that in this chapter. The second way is by applying calculus. Now calculus is mainly divided or differentiated into two parts. First is differentiation and the second is integration. Now for our 10th grade, we are only going to discuss about this differentiation, right? Integration will cover it in our ASA levels or in our IBDP levels. So let us start what is differentiation and now let us apply the concepts of differentiation and try to find out the exact value or exact value of this acceleration, right? Or of this graph. So here I have taken a curve. This curve is of the equation y is equals to x square. And let's say I want to find gradient of this curve when x is 2. So if x is equals to 2, your y is going to be 2 square, which is 4. So what I'm taking, let's say when my x is 2, my y is going to be 4. Now see, in order to find out, in order to find out gradient, what do you need? You need two points. Let's say I'm taking another point on this curve. Let's say this is my second point. This is my second point. And this second point is, let's say, h units away from the first point. It is h units away from the first point. So what is going to be value of this point? This second point is going to be, see this is two units. This is h unit. So x coordinate here is going to be 2 plus h and the y coordinate is going to be 2 plus h whole square, right? So now let us apply the formula of gradient. What are my two coordinates? Let me just once again rewrite it here. My coordinate 1 was 2 comma 4 and my coordinate, my second coordinate was 2 plus h and 2 plus h whole square, right? So now formula of gradient is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So doing the same y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. Now let me simplify it. 2 plus h square or a plus b square. The formula of expansion is a square plus 2ab plus b square. So this is 4 plus 4h plus h square minus 4 upon h, right? 4, 4 will get cancelled out. So on further simplification, I can take h common. So 4 plus h upon h. So my final answer for the gradient is 4 plus h. Now coming back to the graph, C. My final answer was 4 plus h. Now what have I done? I have taken two points. Now as you can see, let's say from these two points, I can form a straight line. From these two points, I can form a straight line. But there is some problem associated with this. See, this straight line is not exactly representing the curve. So now what will I do? I am shifting this point, which is h units away, closer to 2. Let's say I am shifting this h here. Right. Still, this is not accurate. I am shifting this h further closer to 2. Right. I will shift it very, 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 very close to 2 such that h tends to become 0. h is not exactly 0, but that h tends to 0. That is called applying the concept of limits. That h 
tends to zero. It is not zero, but it tends to zero. That is, it could be let's say 2.0000001. Now that is almost equivalent to zero. So if I apply the limit of h tends to zero, my gradient or my slope will be four. This is what application of calculus is. So my gradient of y is equals to x square at x equals to 2 is 4. Now this could be nothing but your speed time graph. Let's say this is a speed time graph y is equals to x square and you have to find your speed at x equals to 2 pm or you have to find your sun out speed. You have to find that your acceleration at x equals to 2 pm. So at 2 pm your acceleration was 4 meter per second square. Right. But this is a very tedious method. We cannot follow, let's say this, this equation is of, the equation is something like this. 3x square plus 7x minus 8 or so on. So we need to have a shortcut formula in order to solve this. The method which we have covered here, this is known as first derivative principle. Right. So let us try to understand the formula or a shortcut way in order to solve that. The shortcut is, let's say any function which is defined as y is equals to x power n. Any function which is defined as y is equals to x power n. Its derivative or its differentiation can be written as dy by dx. Now what does dy by dx signifies here? dy by dx signifies that we have done differentiation or we are finding out derivative of y in terms of x because the equation of y is in terms of x so thus, thus we can say dy by dx now its formula is this n into x power n minus 1 dy by dx can also be represented as f dash of x now f dash is nothing but first derivative Right. So let us apply this formula. What was our equation? Our equation was y is equals to x square. So it's dy by dx is going to be 2 into x because the power comes in front of x. So 2 into x power 2 minus 1 which is 2x. Right. So this was my dy by dx or my gradient or my slope. Now if I want to find out the value then I'll simply substitute the value of x and I'll get the exact value. Let's say x was 2. We were trying to find out the gradient at at x equals to 2. So at x equals to 2 your dy by dx is going to be 2 into 2 which is 4. Right. A simple and a pretty easy formula to remember. Right. So now this is the formula, kindly note this down and let us, let us solve couple more questions based on this formula. So let us take an example, let's say I have taken example y is equals to 3x square. Now I want to find out its dy by dx. So dy by dx or I could also write down as f dash of x. So what does dy by dx is? x power n. The dy by dx of x power n is n into x power n minus 1. So now we are not going to ignore these 3. So 3 will be as it is. The power comes in front of x which is 2 into x 2 minus 1. So 6x. Right. Let us take one more example. y is equals to 6x cube plus 7x square minus 3x plus 4. Now this dy by dx is going to be see power will come in front of x. So 6 into 3 x 3 minus 1 plus 7 into 2 x 2 minus 1 minus 3 into 1 3 into 1 x power 1 minus 1. Now see this is a constant term, right? 4. Can I write 4 as 4 into x power 0? Because any number raised to power 0 is 1, right? So this, the differentiation of this term is going to be 4 into 0 
x power 0 minus 1. Now 0 multiplied by any number is 0. So you just have to remember if there is any constant term its differentiation is always going to be 0. Constant term as in terms which has no value of x. So this differentiation is going to be 18 x square plus 14 x minus 3 because x power 1 minus 1 is 0 and any number is to power 0 is 1 plus 0. Let us take one more example. Let's say the example is y is equals to cube root of x plus square root of x and I want to find out differentiation of this value. Seems difficult but it is not difficult, really difficult. So now this cube root of x I can represent it as x power 1 upon 3 and square root can be written as x power half, right. So the dy by dx applying the same formula power comes in front of x x power n minus 1 plus half x power half minus 1. So the answer for this is going to be 1 by 3 x power minus 2 by 3 plus half x power minus half right. But it's better to write the final answer is x power 2 by 3 plus half x power half. It is better to write this because we don't want to keep the power in negative. Last question for today. Let's say the question is something like this. y is equals to x cube minus 2x square plus 1 upon x square. Now how to solve this question? See, in this question what we'll do, we'll separate the terms, right? As you know, that 3 plus 7 upon 4, I can write it as 3 by 4 plus 7 by 4 and apply the same logic here. So this y can be written as x cube upon x square minus 2x square upon x square plus 1 upon x square. First, let us simplify this term. This x cube upon x square is nothing but x, x square, x square will get cancelled. So minus 2. And this 1 upon x square, I can write this as x power minus 2 because you have studied that 1 upon a power m, this can be written as a power minus m, right? Now, let us apply the concepts of differentiation here. So dy by dx, x differentiation of x is 1, this is constant term, thus 0 and differentiation of this is going to be minus 2 x power n minus 1. So 1 minus 2 x power minus 3 or I can write it as minus 2 upon x cube. This brings to the end of today's lecture. In next lecture, we are going to study about maxima, minima and stationary point. So this is also that is also going to be quite important lecture. Stay updated, stay tuned. We'll soon post the part 2 of this lecture. Bye bye.